Here I'm showing the Adafruit Circuit Playground Express and a program I wrote based on one of Adafruit samples that reads the accelerometer and changes the color of the lights according to the tilt. And the accelerometer reports acceleration on each of the three axes, X, Y, and Z. You see those in the column on the left, to the left of that arrow. And the program maps them into red, green, blue values that you see in the column on the right. Here's the program. It's a single Python program. I have a nice comment at the beginning that talks about the accelerometer reporting generally when you're just gently tilting it, the effect of gravity. And if it's level, gravity pulls only on the z-axis, which turns the lights blue. Okay, we set the overall brightness to 0 0.2 because it gets pretty bright if you don't. And let's look at this function last. Let's look at the main code, which is a loop that calls this process function repeatedly and then delays for a tenth of a second. Here's what process does. It uses the Adafruit CPX library to get the acceleration. This comes back as a kind of a tuple. And then what we want to do is find the color amount for each axis part of the acceleration value. So there are three parts there, one for x, one for y, one for z. And this is a list comprehension that takes each of these parts, x, y, and z, and then calls this function to get the color amount for that x, y, or z, and creates a list with the result. So the result of this line is creating a list with the red, green, and blue color amounts that range between 0 and 255. Then, given that list, we set the pixels with the Adafruit library. And then we log out the values. You saw those columns of numbers scrolling by. That's what this does. Most of the complicated code here is in this color amount function, which we'll look at now. And its job is to map a number in one range to a number in another range. And if you shake this accelerometer really hard, you can get many multiples of the, of the acceleration that gravity alone provides. But we really only want to consider a range of values between zero and standard gravity, which is an acceleration of 9.81 approximately meters per second squared. Uh, if you turn the thing upside down, you'll have negative numbers. Or if you tilt certain ways, you'll get negative numbers. We don't care about that. We're going to turn all those negative numbers into positive numbers. And that's what's happening here. We're just interested in the magnitude. So we use the absolute value function. If this is a negative number, it becomes a positive number with the same magnitude. Then we want to constrain the magnitude to between 0 and standard gravity, which is the 9.81. So we take the, whichever is lower, the magnitude that we've computed above and standard gravity, and we use that. So if we get a number that's bigger than standard gravity, we use standard gravity. If we get something that's equal to or less than standard gravity, we use that. That's what this min function is doing for us here, to constrain those values. Then we want to, for convenience, since we're turning this range of numbers into another range of numbers, we want to turn this into numbers that range between 0 and 1. This is called normalizing. So we take the number which goes between 0 and standard gravity, and we divide it by standard gravity. 
and this gives us a number between 0 and 1. Let's say that the constrained Excel is exactly equal to 9.81. This division would give us a 1. Let's say it's 0. This division would give us a 0. So 0 and 1 is the range of numbers that reflect the acceleration. The only thing left to do then is multiply this 0 to 1 by the biggest number we would want to have for the red, green, blue color values. And that number is 255. When we multiply the normalized acceleration by 255, we now have a number between 0 and 255. Um, we're dealing with floating point numbers though, so we want to round and that'll turn this into an integer. Here's a little picture to illustrate this mapping that takes place with these multiple steps. This represents all the possible numbers we could get, ranging from many multiples of negative g, standard gravity, to positive multiples of standard g. And we want to use the absolute value function to make them all positive. So, for example, a negative 20 would become a positive 20. A 0 would remain 0. A plus 10 would remain plus 10. The next thing we want to do is limit these to one standard gravity. So we ignore anything greater than, or we constrain things so that anything bigger than what we want is limited to the range between 0 and 1 standard gravity. And that's what we use the min function for. Then we, to turn that into a number between 0 and 1, we divide by standard gravity. Then to expand that into 0 to 255, we multiply by 255 and then round. These last parts, log values, really just do formatting. I don't know whether I want to explain them too much. The column of numbers that comes out uh, is nicely, the columns are nicely aligned, and I went through a little extra work to get them to align by using formatting uh, features of the language. Okay, I'll put the link to the source code in the video description, and uh, maybe give this a try.